Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. I'm happy to say that for the first time, I actually have a positive COVID-19 update. That's because for the first time, the FDA has recently authorized the first COVID-19 vaccine. There should be another one to follow within the next week as well. So we finally have some hope to end this pandemic. Still gonna be a while before we get there, but we're on our way. The first vaccine shipments actually left their originating facility earlier today on their way to be distributed to hospitals around the country. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what I know about the vaccine and go through a lot of the questions that I've been getting asked by patients about the vaccine, including who it's gonna to go to and when you might expect to get yours. Before I do that, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel to catch future updates and future videos. And why don't you go ahead and hit that like button while you're at it as well. I'd appreciate it. All right. Let's get started. So what's the status today? Right now, the first vaccine, the one made by Pfizer and BioNTech, has officially been authorized for emergency use and is rolling out to hospitals as we speak. The first individuals are anticipated to get the vaccine either Monday or Tuesday of this week. That is a truly exciting development in the fight against COVID-19. But before we talk more about that, let's talk a little bit about what the vaccine is, whether it's safe or not, and why you should consider getting it when it's your turn. All right, so before I talk about who's gonna get it and when and how it's gonna be distributed, let's talk a little bit about the vaccines themselves, both the vaccine created by Pfizer and BioNTech, as well as the Moderna vaccine that's likely to be approved within the next week, are built on technology that is completely different from vaccines that we've given in the past. Traditional vaccines have been either weakened live viruses or pieces of the virus to stimulate an immune response. In this case, the Moderna and Pfizer slash BioNTech vaccines are actually messenger RNA vaccines. These are tiny little pieces of genetic material that teach cells how to make proteins. In this case, the cells are gonna be making the spike protein that the SARS-CoV-2 virus uses. We can use this little protein to develop an immune response against it to fight off the infection whenever we're exposed to SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes the disease COVID-19. Now, this technology is not necessarily brand new, it's actually been used to develop vaccines in the past, including vaccines against Zika or Ebola and several other viruses. It's just the first time that it's been used to create a vaccine on this scale this quickly. One of the problems with messenger RNA vaccines is that they're highly unstable. And one of the breakthroughs that we used to create this vaccine was the delivery mechanism to actually get the messenger RNA in the cells in a time frame and in a stable form so that the body could actually use it to create an immune response. Now it seems like these vaccines have been developed in record time and they have, which is a great thing, but I can assure you there have been no steps cut in order to evaluate both the safety and the effectiveness of this vaccine. What did help move the vaccine along at record pace is actually the prevalence of the disease in the community because once the companies got to the phase three trial, there was enough disease in the community where these vaccines were being trialed at to actually show a statistical difference in a short amount of time, thanks to the number of people who were being infected. That's the only good thing that I can say about the number of infections going up worldwide. The other thing that's been shortened is just the bureaucratic time to get through all the hoops for data review, safety review, and then finally, vaccine authorization. Basically, these vaccines were allowed to skip to the front of the line. And a lot of the meetings after meetings after meetings that are traditionally held were somewhat condensed, not skipped, but condensed in a way that allowed it to move through the bureaucratic process a whole lot faster. The same independent review was done on both the safety and the efficacy data for both of these vaccine candidates as you would for any other vaccine. It was just done in a shorter period of time. 
The other thing that's really important to note is that the studies included well over 70,000 people. That's more than is traditionally used in vaccine studies. So again, no shortcuts were taken and the data was impressive. Both of these vaccines are two shot vaccines done three weeks apart, but there was actually some protection shown after the first dose, at least with the Pfizer vaccine that we've seen the data on so far. And based on what we've seen, we would expect that to be the same thing for the Moderna vaccine. That's excellent. There's over, you get over 50% efficacy after the first dose, and then around 95% efficacy after the second dose. That is fantastic for any vaccine. Another important aspect of the vaccine trials was, of course, looking for safety data. And in both of the vaccine candidates that are out there right now, there have been no serious adverse events. Now, that doesn't mean there wasn't any adverse events. That means there were no serious, life-threatening adverse events. In both of the trials, you can be sure that there were some mild symptoms. In fact, we've heard anecdotal case stories in the news lately on people who are pretty sure they've gotten the vaccine candidate rather than the placebo that had fever, chills, sweats, headache, muscle aches, just like you would typically get from several other vaccines like the shingles vaccine or the flu shot. It didn't happen in everybody. It's about 14%, if I remember, for fever in uh, the Pfizer trial. So not everybody who got both doses of the vaccine got symptoms, but there were some. Most of them occurred after the second dose. Again, as you would expect, your body's already seen, gotten the first dose of the vaccine, it's already started to build an immune response. And so the second booster shot, you have a stronger immune reaction. But again, that's fantastic news because that means the vaccine is working. So. No serious adverse events. The other thing that you can be reassured about is that in the previous vaccine trials, if there was going to be a serious adverse event, it was gonna happen within usually the first six weeks, but certainly within the first 60 to 90 days. And we now have experience with these vaccines for that long, and again, have not seen any serious adverse events. So put all this together and what do we get? We get a vaccine or vaccines designed and produced in record time, now being distributed out to the public to hopefully help put a stop to this pandemic. But don't stop what you're doing just yet because it's still gonna be a while before enough people get vaccinated in order to slow down and stop this pandemic. So let's talk a little bit about who's gonna get it and when they're gonna get it. So what we know so far is that vaccine has already been produced, and that was actually part of the government's Operation Warp Speed project where they prepaid for a lot of the vaccine, allowing the manufacturers to actually start manufacturing the vaccine while it was still in clinical trials in hopes that it would be effective and then could immediately be distributed. That's why we're seeing vaccine already on planes and trucks heading to hospitals today to be given to um, healthcare workers and those in long-term care facilities as the first group of people who will get this vaccine because it was already manufactured ahead of approval. Um, that was another one of the things that was done as part of this project to allow the vaccine to get out there faster. And that's been part of just about every manufacturer strategy. A little bit of a risk that they took because of course the studies could have gone the other way and they could have not been effective, but Thankfully, so far, everything we're seeing shows a great vaccine candidate. Okay, let's talk about vaccine distribution, who's gonna get it and when they're gonna get it. So what has happened is the federal government has actually worked with the manufacturers to purchase the vaccine and will give it to the states to then distribute. But unfortunately, each state can create their own prioritization. So that's gonna create potentially a little bit of confusion across the country. Now, hopefully most states are gonna give it in the same way. Everything that I've heard so far has been that, as I mentioned before, the first folks to get the vaccine are gonna be healthcare workers and folks that live in long-term care facilities. After that, it might get a little murky because I've seen recommendations for both essential workers, which that's a, a huge group of people with a lot of 
variabilities in there and you know how do you determine who's an essential worker is that police and firefighters or is that everybody who works at walmart um we're still waiting to see some of the specific details on that the other group that's um, recommended to get it second is of course those who are at high risk so that's going to be your folks that are over 65 um, and then people with several of the chronic health conditions that have been shown to be at higher risk for COVID-19, such as those with a BMI over 30, uh, heart disease, chronic kidney disease, chronic lung disease, et cetera. And then after that, it'll be the general population. Now, the vaccine is being manufactured at record pace, but there's still a limit to how much that can be made at any given time. And of course, it's not just the United States that needs this vaccine. It needs to be distributed worldwide. Now, there are multiple vaccine manufacturers making vaccine all over the country. If you've been paying attention to the vaccine front, you know that China's already giving out their version of the vaccine. Russia actually started giving theirs before they even finished clinical trials. So there are different countries working on vaccines themselves, but a lot of the manufacturers are international manufacturers and will ship vaccine all over the world. So the capacity of this vaccine and the availability is going to be limited for quite some time. So what's the best estimate that I've seen so far on when you might expect to get it? Well, starting this month, again, this week most likely, and then going through the end of December, we'll likely vaccinate our healthcare workers and our long-term care uh, residents. Starting in January is when we'll likely move, again, subject to vaccine availability, on to essential workers and those with chronic health conditions. Now that's going to take a little while to get through because that population gets quite large, again, depending on how you define essential worker. After that, we'll move on to the general public. I would expect probably the general public getting the vaccine somewhere in March, April, maybe even as late as May. And a lot of this is going to depend on how many manufacturers eventually are authorized for emergency use. Right now we only have two. Now there are several other companies that are completing their phase three trials and should apply for emergency use at some point in the near future. Obviously the more vaccine we have available from different companies, the more people we can get it to. The last variable that we'll talk about is actually whether people are willing to accept it or not. I know there's a lot of skepticism out there, again, around how quickly this vaccine was developed, is it truly new or untested technology? Um, I hope through this video that you've heard enough information to help you feel more reassured that this is not new technology. It is a very safe vaccine. It has not been rushed. There have been no safety steps skipped. And you can rest assured that this vaccine is both safe and effective. And frankly, it's the only way that we have out of this pandemic completely because unfortunately we don't have enough people complying with the public health measures to get out of this. Now, that's another good thing to point out. Even once you get the vaccine, if you're one of the lucky few early on here, until we hit 70% of the population getting the vaccine, you're still gonna need to follow those same health practices that you've been following for the last eight or nine months. Wash your hands, wear a mask, and keep your distance. It's still going to be vitally important until we get to that so-called herd immunity phase, which is 70% of the population receiving the vaccine. So when it comes up to be your turn, and if you still have questions about the safety or the efficacy of the vaccine, I hope you'll talk with your physician or your healthcare provider about the safety of the vaccine and whether it's appropriate for you to get it. There are a few specific populations like pregnant women, breastfeeding, those that are immunocompromised, that you definitely should have a conversation with your healthcare provider before you get the vaccine. The Pfizer vaccine was actually authorized for use in all three of those populations, but it is recommended that you have a conversation with your physician before taking the vaccine just to make sure that it's appropriate for you. Okay. The last question that I get asked by my patients is, are you going to take it? And the answer is emphatically yes. If I had the opportunity in my healthcare system, I'd be the first one in line because I am tired of this virus. I'm tired of dealing with this and I want it to end as fast as it can. So if that means being first in line to get the vaccine, that's where I'll be. But yes, I will get the vaccine. 
I've talked to several physicians in my practice as well as in my healthcare system. They are all planning on getting the vaccine. My family, when it's their turn, including my kids, when it's authorized for use in kids. Right now, it's the Pfizer vaccine is only authorized down to 16. They will get the vaccine as well. I can't give any higher of an endorsement for the vaccine other than to say I will get it and my family will get it. And I certainly would not do anything myself that I felt was unsafe. And I definitely would not allow my family to do anything that I felt was unsafe. All right. So finally, some good news. Don't give up hope. Keep plugging along. I know we're all burnt out. I know we're all tired of it. Christmas is coming up and we just want to get back to normal. And unfortunately, Christmas and New Year's are not going to be normal this year because we're not going to get there fast enough. So keep wearing your mask, keep washing your hands, and keep your distance for just a little while longer. And remember, as always, be safe out there.